this is an automatic feeder for my goats. Um, if you've seen my channel for a while, you know I, I used to have a different, well, it's over here. I used to use this system right here, and that board up there on the top folds down over the trough, and then when it gets dark, uh, it releases and opens up. If you want to see that, I'll link the video in the description. The problem with that one is you have to load it every day. And so if I'm gone for a weekend or something, uh, they don't get fed and they don't have any reason to come into the barn. So they're kind of, they're not real bright. And so uh, when at night when the, the bell, a bell rings to tell them to come in before the door closes and half of them stay outside. So I devised a way to get feed, to feed them right as the bell goes off. It feeds them, they come in to get the feed and the door closes behind them. I have coyotes, so if they don't get locked in the barn, uh, they can get eaten. So let me pull you in here and show you um, a little bit about this and then I'll show you uh, building it. This is the drive mechanism and I go into more detail on it uh, in another video, but um, it's just a geared motor and then there's a shaft that runs all the way through that's got an auger on it. And I have, I have footage of making that auger. And then this yellow thing just has um, screws on the end of it. And this proximity sensor sees those screws as they go by and counts how many times uh, you want the auger to dump. You can see this has four segments because it, the auger that goes through, it's not really a true auger. It's a divided uh, vein and it has four segments. So each segment will dump. And this is the scoop that I normally use. It's a three-quart scoop. And so when it counts two of these segments have passed by, it'll be about one of these scoops. So that way you can change it. So if you want to give, give them, um, you know, a certain amount, you can increase it or decrease it or whatever it is, you know, that you want to do. I've still got to get a housing put around this to protect all of this. And let me show you. Uh, I'll turn it on. You'll hear a bell ring um, because that's how they know to come in. All right, I'm gonna try that again because I think this over here, I think it was pushed back just a little bit so that it registered it almost immediately as one count. So it only really did one. Here we go. And there you go, I got almost one scoop. And this one put out a full scoop. The rest of this up here is a hopper. And I don't have any hinges on this yet. But there you can see the feed in there. And it's just got about a half a sack in there. I can fill, it'll hold I think two sacks on both sides, which would last, oh gosh, several weeks. All right, let's get into the shop and I'll show you how I made it. I have a separate video on this trough right here. This is my working drawing uh, for making the sides, the end plates and the one that goes in the middle. And so here I, I had a little disc that I made as my auger, a representative. I've got two circles here because I started out low and I actually liked it a little bit higher because I've got to control the, the grain as it comes down in, I got to keep it from falling through when this is not turning. So I had to make these a little bit tighter here. But um, just a quick overview. So this sits here, and then this is the front wall right here. It'll run straight through. And then I've got a nailing block here. This will finish off the hopper. So you got the back side and the front side here. And this is just another nailing block here. These two are two pieces of oak that run the length. And I used oak because this is going to be turning and so there's going to be some wear on this and that oak will wear a little bit better. A little nailing block back here to hold that. And then this piece will just screw to the front of the boards that I've got here. So now I'm just transferring this. I've got some scrap plywood here uh, that I'm going to use to make those sides. And so I've transferred this pivot hole right here for the auger right here. So I've got to make... Um, a hole for the axle to go through and then to hold the bearing. This is my bearing that I'm using right here. So I've got to make a, a hole to let the axle go through and then a recess for this bearing to fit into. And so I'm going to do that with some Forstner bits. All right, and I've got the depth set on my drill press because I want these bearings to stand just a little proud of the plywood so that I can clamp them in place.
Yeah, that should be just right. And now the hole for the axle. To fix the bearings in place, I just punched a hole in some knockouts from some electrical boxes. And I'm just going to place three of those on each one. Alright, that should hold it firmly in place and the center still turns well. So I've kind of got it put together temporarily. So let me show you before I get too far, let me show you how the drivetrain works. So down here we've got a gear motor and it'll have a sprocket on it just like this one and then a chain will drive that. This drives this axle which is just some three quarter inch steel that I put a couple of flats on it. And then you've got your bearing and I welded that three quarter inch rod into the conduit that runs down the length of that auger. And then to tie the two together, now to hold these together so that when the motor turns this one, this one will also turn, I've got this piece of pipe in here and then I drilled a hole down through here all the way through there and then I'll fix it with a long uh, hardened screw. I've got the three sides I got a mess going on my bench here, but I got the three sides here and there, and I got the motor mounted there. Here's the two augers in place right there, and the pipe that we were just talking about is in between here, and I've got it secured with that screw there, and one right there. And then it goes through, of course, goes through the bearings there. I wound up putting, I cut a piece of pipe. To, I cut a piece of pipe to make a little spacer right there so that these augers can't get too tight up against the sides. There's one at each connection there. Here's the far end right there. Here's the end with the motor. And it runs chain drive. To a sprocket there that's attached to the auger and this is a piece that I 3d printed uh, just to give an indicator of where the auger blades are right there and then I have a proximity sensor that reads it and I've got a control board over here and I'll do a separate video on how that all works so what I'm working on right now so now I have to enclose this auger so that, you know, we'll have a, a wall that comes like this and then one that comes back like this that kind of makes a hopper for you put the feed in there and then I've got to have some way of metering out the feed. And so I've got these two boards made and I've got a little ledge on here and what that does is it kind of closes this off because if I just put a board here, when the auger gets when the auger gets in this position, feed would just slide down because this wouldn't be there to hold it. It would get like that and it would leave a gap and feed would just run down through there. So I had to put this little ledge on there and when I bring that into place like this, it narrows that gap down so that when this is in that sideways position, it keeps grain from running down through there. So I've got to get these connected, but let me just turn this on for a second and let you see how it runs. So these sides, I've just got to cut a little piece here and I'll attach that and then I can just screw that in and that'll get these put in place. And the one that's on the front side there um, I'm just going to run a board straight all the way across and then I'll just screw these to that. So I'll take a board like this and run it across like that and just screw those into it. All right, I've got it installed and I've got, um, all I did was I've got these uh, one by 
one by four, one by six oak on the other side there, and I just screwed straight into this board on the other side to attach it to the wall. And I've got a separate video on how I made this trough, but that's how it's mounted here. And then I just wire it into, I've got a feed room where, you know, rodents can't get into. And that's where everything's wired into where the control panel is. So other than getting this closed in, I think I'm good to go. Hope this was interesting to you. Thank you for watching.